Did you ever want to develop a product that really changes the world? If it was an app, it would take you on average $200,000 and one year of work, and your odds of being financially successful would be around 1 in 10,000. So do you think this is hard? Well, if you were in my field, uh, developing new medicines, uh, your odds would be very similar, one in 10,000, but the major difference would be you would need to spend 10 years of work and on average $2.6 billion. So, um, and that shows you that innovation in medicine is fundamentally different from innovation in information technology. You need to spend 10 times the amount of work and you need to spend 10,000 times the amount of money to develop a new medicine. But I personally, people who know me, um, I'm, I'm not really that much interested in money. But what interests me is what kind of impact we can generate by using this kind of money. And in order to uh, have an idea, in order to quantify what impact in medicine actually means, I came up with the concept, a concept of impact level. Impact level is the order of magnitude of human lives improved. This sounds very complicated, but it's actually very simple, so I'm going to tell you what it is. An example, 10 to the power of 1 is 10, so if you improve the life of 10 people, then this would be impact level 1. And improving the life, I, know, I don't just mean uh, making them feel a little better. I mean really saving lives or significantly extending the healthy lifespan of a human. Um, and you can take this to the next level, 10 to the power of 2 would be 100 or hundreds of people, which would uh, be impact level 2. And so on, impact level 3, it's thousands of people you would help, and so on, and so on, and so on. And as soon as we come to impact level 6, and this is what I would call uh, a, a truly uh, a high-impact medicine, uh, because it cures millions of people, and that I consider to be a major impact and a major uh, contribution to society. And of course, what we all want is, ultimately, we want to help the people of the world, to improve people's lives and to save lives in the order of magnitude of billions. And this would be impact level nine. Now, let me tell you a little story about the first modern medicine that actually reached impact level 9. Imagine it's 1928. You are a Scottish microbiologist in London. Hard to imagine nowadays. And um, you're trying to work on Staphylococcus bacteria. Staphylococcus bacteria at the time were very dangerous pathogens. So um, people that got wound infections with the Staphylococcus, in many cases they would die of the infection because there's no cure at all. But um, you're working with this, uh, with this pathogen and it's just before your summer holidays. And what you do is you take one of these typical um, Petri dishes with agar in it, and you put some of the bacteria on top, so that when you return from your holidays, uh, the bacteria would have grown nicely and you can use them for an experiment. And uh, so you go on holiday, and then you come back from the Scottish Highlands, uh, fully energized, uh, and you look at your culture, and this is what you see. Ooh, green fluffy mold has spoiled your bacterial culture. Uh, really disgusting. So what would the average researcher do? Throw it away, right? So uh, start a new experiment, but not you. Your reaction would be, oh, this is interesting. You would have a closer look, and you would see this strange halo around the mold, and as soon as you do some analysis, you find out that actually this strange halo contains dead bacteria. And then you make this really amazing conclusion that the mold is producing something that kills bacteria. And the rest is history. So in 1928, Alexander Fleming discovered the first antibiotic, which is penicillin. And it took until 1942, actually, to produce sufficient quantities to treat human beings. But from that time on, 
diseases that were absolutely deadly at the time, so wound infections, syphilis, could be easily cured. And since this discovery, um, actually over a billion people benefited from penicillin. So this makes this drug impact level nine. So now let's, let's take a deeper look into the history on, of such high impact medicines. Uh, and I've just done the analysis that I just uh, look at the last century. And what you see here is the number of high impact medicines completely novel treatments that hit the market in each of those decades. And the first interesting finding is uh, the 80s seem to have been a very productive period where a total of nine different completely novel cures for major diseases came to the market, such as human insulin for the uh, treatment of diabetes or such as TPA for the treatment of heart attacks and strokes. So very important discoveries uh, where the drugs actually hit the market. So. Um, but what I was expecting was, because everybody's talking about exponential development, was an exponential development of these high-impact uh, new medicines. And the only thing that's actually exponential is the money that is being spent on research and development. So there seems to be a disconnect between, on one hand, investment in research, and on the other hand, the type of impact that is being generated for humanity. And I would just like to give you an example. This is, this is one of uh, the big game changers in modern medicine. Uh, who in the room knows Praziquantel? Show of hands. One, two, not that many. This is because we are not in Africa. Uh, Praziquantel was developed in the 70s and is actually extremely effective uh, for the treatment of parasitic worms, especially uh, this uh, fellow on the right side here, uh, which is called uh, a blood fluke. Schistosoma. And in Africa, actually 200 million people are currently suffering from this schistosomiasis, and it looks in some cases like this poor little child on the, on the left side. So the liver is basically full of those worms. And, um, and actually 280,000 people are dying of this disease every year. Um, but despite this uh, very good effect of this drug, it's tablets, you just swallow them and the worms go away, this drug was never commercially successful. Um, actually, in 2007, the company Merck in Darmstadt decided to basically switch to the Praziquantel donation program with the WHO, the World Health Organization. And since then, uh, Merck was only donating the tablets. So since then, 500 million tablets have been donated to, to basically uh, um, uh, people in Africa, mostly school children, and more than 100 million of those were treated with these tablets. So, talking about absurdity, uh, we're looking here at, at a drug that actually has an impact of at least level eight, so hundreds of millions of people, and on the other hand, a complete financial failure. Uh, this is quite absurd, and the question is, why is this? And if we look for a comparison, uh, who in the room knows Botox? Show of hands, quite a few. Uh, this is what I expected. It's to, to get rid of these nasty wrinkles you have in your face. Um, uh, great drug, generated in 2015, sales of over $3 billion. But not really a life-saving drug, I would say. Um, and so, very low impact level. And this shows you a little more, uh, this, uh, this absurdity. So, um, if as a conclusion, if, if it's not money, that is driving high-impact innovation, what is it? Any idea? You're all very shy. Well, you probably know it. It's curiosity, right? The curiosity that led Alexander Fleming to turn a failed experiment into a discovery that truly changed the world. So what do we learn from this? Maybe we should focus less on money. Maybe we should focus a little more on impact. And maybe we should focus more on curiosity-driven research so more of us actually reach impact level nine. Thank you. <laughs>